Instead of feeling connected, by bringing your hands into prayer pose. Being present to the V space we created. And tuning in. Asatoma Satkamaya Tamasoma Jodigamaya Metroma Amritangamaya Aum Shanti 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 Inhaling deeply, suspending the breath. And then we exhale and slowly open our eyes. So I'd like for you to just to bring your right arm in front of you. Right fingertips pointing to the side, left arm comes underneath. And you just pull on your right arm so that you feel the stretch in your back, in your shoulder. Long, deep breathing here. Close your eyes for a moment. Pull a little more if it's, you know, feels good. Allowing the breath to open you up from the inside. When we slowly take our left hand, we hold on to our right elbow, we bring the arms overhead, and you gently pull on your right elbow and lean over to the left. So your right forearm connects with your ear. Breathe consciously into your right side. And then come up to center. And we switch, we bring our left arm in front, right arm goes underneath and you just pull. And just pull to your own liking. But you want to feel the stretch. Good, and then we bring our right hand holding onto our left elbow, arms overhead. We pull gently and leaning our torso to the right, breathing into the left side of our body. Making sure that our left sit bone stays connected to whatever you're sitting on. You come to center. And you can bring your left hand to the outside of your right thigh. No matter if you sit on a chair or cross-legged, bring your right hand behind you and look gently over your right shoulder. See that the twist comes from the base of your spine. As if you're unwinding yourself. 
Bring your head slightly up. Long, deep breathing. switch and sure enough you go to the other side so right hand to the outside of your right thigh, left thigh left hand behind you look over your left shoulder When we come to center, we bring both arms up overhead, palms face each other. You lean over to the left on the inhalation, and then you lean forward, arms hugging the ears the whole time over to the right, and then arch just slightly back. So big rotations. Inhaling when you come up. Exhale when you go forward and down. You can inhale through your nose coming up. Exhale, open mouth, leaning forward. Reverse the direction, same breath pattern, inhale up, exhale forward. come to center we bring the arms out to the side the fingertips touch the pads thumbs are extended arms go slightly back so you feel the stretch over your chest and we start a gentle breath of fire equal in an exhale through your nostrils like you're engaging your navel you go slow on the exhale, your navel moves back. On the inhale, you become bigger. And opening up the gateway to our heart. Thirty more seconds. And this cleanses your blood and your sinuses. Inhale, suspend your breath, have the tip of your thumbs touch overhead. Then bring, connect the back of your hands. Exhale, sweep through your auric field. Rest your hands onto your knees or your thighs. Keep your eyes closed. Regulate your breath. Nirmala, you want to take it from here? I was regulating my breath. <laughs> Takes a while. <laughs> Thank you, Sidi. I want to say about this, um, about the movements and the stretching that Sidi is 
leading us through so beautifully. Of course, that's stretching us physically. It's engaging us with our physical body, but it's also a metaphor for the stretching that we do in our everyday movement of life, the stretching of our acceptance of things that are not maybe easy or so pleasing to us, our willingness to stretch into whatever we're being asked to do, um, just the stretching and expansion of our whole being. Um, so when you do these stretches, to be reminding yourself you're stretching on all levels, you're not just stretching the physical body. There's a stretch that's happening energetically and attitudinally and intellectually, everything about us. Um, and that's why stretching and moving with our body is so important and such a strong piece of the yogic process is that we engage this physicality and we allow it to be a guide not just the physical body that carries us, but a guide to remind us of all these other aspects of ourselves that we want to continue to expand and grow and deepen and live into. So it's really um, such an important piece of our day. I don't know if all of you or any of you or most of you get up in the morning and do some simple stretches, but all of these stretches that City brings to us are great um, great ones to use just to awaken yourself in the morning to the fullness of who you are and what this soul is bringing into this life, not just the physical body, but all aspects of us. Um, I just wanted to say that because I feel it every time City gives us a stretch, I feel it in a way that's, um, you know, that is so expansive. And I just think, oh, God, just it's a luxury to have a body, to you be able to use your body in this way, it's a luxury. So just to enjoy that. Oh, today, we are going to talk about loving awareness today. So you might be saying, what the heck is loving awareness? So the heart is the principle and the center of one's life as a person. It is also the place where the human being in its own source borders on the mystery of God. The heart is the principle and center of one's life as a person. It is also the place where the human being is in its own source borders on the mystery of God. So we've talked a lot about the chakras or energy centers in our body. And interesting, again, today, as we'll talk about this to be reminded that the heart chakra and energy center is the middle one connecting our lower three chakras, which are more uh, physically uh, bound and physical indications of how our physical life or what's happening physically for us is going on. And our upper three chakras, more of the connection with the divine and where we're moving into our intuitive nature. So the heart is this bridge between those two aspects of our life and tying us together in the fullness of who we are. So it's really for us to concentrate on not only the physicality of the heart, but the, um, the more energetic value that the heart brings to the fullness of, a, of our lives and how we express ourselves. So how do we get to loving kindness and loving awareness? Um, I wanna talk a little bit about the difference between loving kindness, which is a beautiful Buddhist um, meta meditation, has been introduced by the Buddhists as a way of incorporating our compassion and love, not only for ourselves, but for all sentient beings. Um, and I think we've done the meta meditation actually together um, many months ago, but loving kindness is a way of bringing action into the world and being available to support and help others that are in need and offering our the kindness of our heart to all sentient beings, regardless of where they are and who they are and just being present for everyone. That's a little different from loving awareness, which we'll talk about today, which is a way of being. It's not a doing, it's a being. It's a, um, it becomes the expression of you, not in your physicality, but in your entirety of who you are that your awareness is expanded to a place where you are love. You're not doing love, you are love. 
So for us to understand this, we first need to understand the construct that we call myself, ourselves. Um, within our consciousness, there are three different points of view. The first is the ego, the plane of our personality. Most of us are convinced that we are, we are our egos, which is who we think we are. Um, I am a mother, I am a teacher, I am a wife, I am a, a business executive. If someone asks you, who are you? You'll have a list of actions that you do into the world um, that define you. And it's really challenging for us to both operate in the world with these different attributes and not identify those as being us, who we are, because that's what we're doing. That's how we're spending our time. That's our, our daily and maybe our um, the source of our livelihood. It's certainly the source of many relationships in our lives. Our role, whether it is as a sister or a mother or whatever it happens to be, those roles take up a lot of our um, landscape of us looking at who we are. Um, the problem with that is that we get attached to it and we start to limit ourselves by defining ourselves by those roles. So the ego is part of our incarnation. When we come into this body, we come in with an ego that wants to express itself in certain ways. And then we find the different ways that that's possible in our life based on circumstances and purpose and effort, all of these things play into it. But the ego dies with the body that's one of the reasons that we intuitively fear death is that we know that it's the, the death is not just the physical body, but it's the death of the ego that the ego construct that we've created around who we are. And there's a certain attachment to that. So our goal, our aim as we work on our spiritual journey is to learn to identify with the soul, which is outside of the ego. The soul is our second level of the construct in our consciousness. It's the second way that we have a worldview. And the worldview as an individual soul is very different than the worldview of our ego self. Our dharma or our service into the world is really concentrated through the individual soul and how we express ourselves into the world of where our calling is. So it's more your avocation than your vocation. So our ego expresses our vocation and our soul will illustrate and express our avocation into the world. The selflessness, the self, the ser place we serve from is our soul space. And the third perspective that we have is one of the mystical or the oneness to which we belong. So we're all a part of the whole as well as being individual, as well as being the ego that is serving into the world in whatever way it's serving. So we're all three of these aspects simultaneously. We can't easily separate them, but how we're experiencing every given moment in the world depends on which point of view our awareness is tuned into. So let me say that again, we're all three of these perspectives, the perspective of the ego, the perspective of the individual soul, and the perspective of the consciousness of the mystical or oneness. But the way that we experience each moment depends on the point of view that our awareness is tuned into. So if we're tuned into the action of doing something that's selfless, we have a perspective of looking through our eye, the eye of our soul. If we're active into maintaining the identity with a certain role that we play, then our consciousness is looking through the role and the ego of our entirety, not the soul of our entirety. And sometimes we can blend them together, but we tend to have our, where our awareness is placed is how it is that we're experiencing a situation. So for instance, if you're experiencing some discomfort um, in a social situation where people are all have a certain mindset about how something should be and they're really into who they are and what they've achieved, you may feel in that a certain discomfort because you're judging yourself against them and it might not be where your strength is or what you're even interested in, but because your awareness is in the others placing the importance on the ego construct, you are now seeing it and experiencing it through that eye, your ego's eye. And the third way that we experience 
things is through the mystical or the oneness, which when we're looking at the wholeness and the fullness of who we are, then the ego doesn't get trapped. And our awareness in the situation sees the oneness of the gathering and the people that we're around rather than the ego expression that they might be expressing or that we might be expressing. So our awareness is the key to how we're able to see the world, whether we want to see it fragmented or we want to see it whole. And we're responsible for our awareness, how in tuned we want to be will impact how we're seeing the world. Of course, that makes perfect sense. Um, but sometimes we confuse our souls with our roles. So we have a role of doing certain things that we then have attached to in a way that that's who we believe we can express ourselves. That aspect is how we express ourselves into the world. And we forget that the easiest and the most natural way of expressing ourselves is as a soul. It's in the wholeness and fullness of ourselves. If we follow our loving awareness or our higher consciousness, let's call that, if we look at ourselves as a higher consciousness or lower consciousness, not as a, um, I'm not comparing them, one is better and one is worse, not in that way, just in that your higher consciousness is that which is connected to the, the divine nature, which you are, and your lower consciousness is connecting you to the earthly nature, the physicality of who you are. Both are needed, we're here in a physical body. It's not wrong or bad to be connected or, or attached to in a way that is healthy. When it gets unhealthy, whether we're attached to um, the physicality of our body or how we express it, then our awareness only stays with that aspect of how we are in the world. And we miss this higher consciousness contact with the divine nature that we are. We want to enjoy both. We're here to enjoy both. You're here to be in a physical body, enjoying the fruits and the beauties of having physicality as a way to both express in and experience the world. But we're also here to connect to our higher nature. We came in with that connection and we're here to maintain it or to reclaim it. If we follow our loving awareness or our higher consciousness, we become in God awareness and God as a broad term that can mean perfection to you or unity to you or oneness, however you experience the God nature, following our loving awareness instantly places us in places us in relationship with our God awareness. We're aware of the divinity that exists around us and that is the pool that we're swimming in of divinity. And we're part of that. We're swimming in it. We're not separate from. We're already in it. You don't enter it and find it somewhere like you arrive, you are already in it. It's just us recognizing and reclaiming and, and being in um, contact with it in a way that's really substantive in our life. So when you're in your intuitive self, the knowing self, the flow, when you're in that flow that is handling whatever's coming to you and you have a willingness to engage, that is your soul plane. You're accessing your higher self, which is bringing you into contact with this this pool of God awareness, this same awareness is in everyone. And when we enter into it, we get into connection with oneness. We start to feel that lack of separation. And ultimately, our aim is to be in that connective place where we're one of the whole. Because when you're one of the whole, you no longer can do anything that is um, not pleasant to anyone else. You can no longer call out people. You can't be judgmental. You will find your heart opens in an entirely different way because you're part of the whole. So if you're damaging somebody that's part of the whole, you're also damaging yourself and you feel that very strongly. So your intention to bring loving awareness into your life so that you can experience all everything that's happening, all the joy that's happening around us, as well as all the pain, we can experience the entire pool of experiences that all of humanity is feeling. And you might say, well, why the heck would I want to do that? Because you want to have the expansiveness of everything and be able to take that energy and calibrate it and work with it. Even when we perceive something as being more difficult, unpleasant, why would I want to have that in my pool? As soon as you separate out that, you can no longer get the highest level 
of the good or however you want to frame it. We have to get both ends of the spectrum. We can't choose to just take the pieces we want. It doesn't work that way. If you want the fullness of the joy and the uprising of your humanness into the world, you have to also accept that there's pain in the world and that there's pain in your life and not actually shrink from it, but embrace it. There's a beautiful quote that goes, we are born into the world of nature. Our second birth is into the world of spirit. So it is our aim, and this is what we work on while we're gathering together, is our birth into the world of spirit, where we're connected fully 100% of the time, not some of the time, 100% of the time we're connected with this higher consciousness or higher self, so that everything that's coming through us is coming from that perspective. Your awareness is in the perspective that I am loving awareness, taking a dance through life. And this dance allows me to go into many different places. Some are light and really beautiful and some are darker, but I'm dancing through all of it. I'm not separating myself out and jumping out of the pool. I'm in the pool of loving awareness all the time. And I feel no duality. I don't feel the separation of other. I don't place others above or behind me or below me. We're all in this pool together and we are a part of it. Everyone's a part of it. We can't separate that. The contentment or, or I'll even say the joy that we talk about here in the fragrance of joy. The joy and contentment is an attitude of our soul, an attitude of our soul rather than the attitude of our ego or our personality. So for us to be sitting in the pool of joy, we have to have the attitude of our soul being the place through the portal through which we're going. And our soul is sitting in the intuitive nature, in the non-judgmental, in the oneness, non-separation, non-duality. That's where our soul sits naturally. Only your ego sits in the place of separation, better than someone's achieving something better than I am, or they, their role is more interesting than mine, or that's all our mind's construct of separation. So if we want to have that joy and contentment that is natural to us, that's our natural state. When we're in our soul state, our higher consciousness, our higher self, the natural state is contentment and joy. There can be nothing else. Because all of these constructs that we use to decide something's better or worse or easier or harder are all constructs of our mental, physical capacity. They aren't constructs of the soul. So for us to be in that place of joy and connectedness, we stay in our soul awareness. We stay in our love awareness. And then we live into that space. And if we keep that as the central thought in our mind that I am my soul, and when I look at others, I see them as souls. I don't see them as individuals expressing themselves into the world in ways that I can judge or not judge. I simply see them as a soul. And when you do that, I see the individual differences, men and women and rich and poor and attractive and unattractive and physically infirmed or not. But I don't recognize those things as being the qualities of who they are. Those are simply attributes of their physicality. I recognize them as another soul and I see everyone as being part of the one larger soul that we're all aspects like a diamond with the facets. We're all a facet of the whole diamond. We don't take the facet out and go running off somewhere else. We stay intact with the whole. And then there's no judgment and no separation. There's a sweetness. And loving awareness is emotion, is the emotion of merging. It's the becoming one. So when we sit in loving awareness and we make a conscious effort to be in loving awareness, we will sit in the understanding and the experience of oneness. Love is a way of pushing through into the one. We treat love and hate and other emotions like they're all on the same level, but they're not. Hate, fear, lust, greed, jealousy, these all come from our lower self, our lower consciousness, from the ego. Only love comes from the soul. That's all that can come from the soul or the higher consciousness, higher self. Nothing else can come from the soul except love. That's all that there is. In that state, you are nothing but pure love. When you identify with your soul, you live in a loving universe. 
the soul loves everybody. The soul does not distinguish between those who are lovable and those who are not lovable. It's like the sun. It brings out the beauty in each of us. When we see one another as souls and we relate to one another that way, there's a different chemistry that happens between the physicality of individuals, a different chemistry. There's a letting go of the guard. There's a letting go of the ego. And then there's a merging and there's this beautiful flow that happens between our individual soul and our soul as part of the oneness. And you feel this in your heart, the juncture between your ego self, your lower self and your higher self, the heart. So us concentrating and spending time on the heart center gives us this journey of loving awareness. If we change the identification from the ego to the soul, all souls will appear to me as being in a, a level of perfection, even with whatever qualities they carry. Because the discernment and the difference of seeing somebody in as a whole and oneness is channeling how we're experiencing them through our heart. If we channel how we experience them through our mind, we're going to have a different experience of them. And the object of our love is love itself. We just want to be love. We want to be love, not do love, be love. So this week, I invite you to take the opportunity to see yourself as love and love you are moving around through your life as love in every situation you're in. You simply are spilling over with love from your heart. And it isn't that you have to do more or think something differently or say something differently. You just have to be it. Just be love and see how that changes your um really your relaxation with the world. When we stop trying to separate and organize, there's a lot of energy that's spent on that. When we stop doing that and we just sit in the oneness, it's much easier. We use less energy and we have much more vitality left for us to move through the world. So this week, let's just be love, love awareness, loving awareness. Beautiful, thank you. Um, um, may I say something, Nirmala? Can you please repeat the quote verse? The quote nature and what's the second part? Yeah, I'll, I will put it on our um, chat. Good. Okay, I would like for you to take your left hand and you just bring your fingers down very gently and the thumb is left, you know, over. And then you wrap your right hand around your left. And so the Thumbs are touching the side of your thumb. So you just embrace your left hand, the hand that comes from the heart. And you keep this mudra in front of your mouth. And we will inhale through the nose and then we exhale through the open mouth into the space between our thumbs. So we are giving the energy from the heart into our hands through our breath. So we inhale through the nose and exhale, open mouth. And feel the gentle breath touching your skin. Stimulating the neural activity under your skin. Breathing life into yourself. Breathing love into yourself.
Very gently, we bring our hands into our left, right hand on top of the left. Tip of our thumbs are touching. We breathe in and out of our nostrils. Sitting in silence. And in the silence, we're connecting to our V space. From here we bring our hands into prayer pause. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Thank you all for joining.